In this video, I want to illustrate how we can use a method which is known as a Bayes box to allow us to calculate the denominator. And the Bayes box, in case you think it's just useful for denominators, it's useful elsewhere, mainly as a tool for teaching us exactly how Bayes' rule works. And this concept is best illustrated by means of an example. So we imagine that there is some bag which contains two balls whose colours we don't know. However, what we can do is we can reach into that bag and we can randomly sample one of these balls. So suppose that we do that and we put out our first ball and it happens to be red in colour. Then what we do is we put the red ball back into the bag and then we randomly sample another ball from the bag. And so then suppose that we pull out another red ball. A question we might have after this experiment is what's the number of red balls in the bag, which I'm denoting here by R? Well, what we can do is we can use Bayes' rule to work out our posterior probability distribution for the number of red balls in our bag. So the probability of a given value of R conditional on the fact that we have just drawn out two red balls from our bag is equal to, in the numerator, we have the prior probability for a particular number of red balls in the bag times the likelihood term, which is the probability that we would have drawn out two red balls conditioned on a particular value of R. Then in the denominator of Bayes' rule, we just have the probability that we would have drawn out two red balls which is essentially a marginalised probability which we get by marginalising the numerator of Bayes' rule with respect to R. So how does a Bayes box help us to calculate this posterior in this example? Well, we first of all start off by listing the possible values of R. Before we actually sample from the bag, we suppose that it's possible that the number of red balls could be zero, it could be one or it could be two. We imagine that we know that there are only two balls in the bag. And the next thing that we specify is the prior probability of a particular number of red balls. So that's the first term in the numerator of basis rule. And suppose that before we actually draw any of the balls out of the bag, we suppose that each of these values of R are equally probable. So we ascribe a probability of third to R being 0, R being 1, and R being 2. The next term that we include in Bayes' box is a column which represents the likelihood term. So here we're just writing out the probability that we would have drawn two red balls conditioned on a particular value of R, the number of red balls in the bag. So the probability that we would have drawn out two red balls if there were no red balls in the bag is obviously zero, that's impossible. Then if we consider the R equal one case, then the probability that we draw out two red balls here is just the probability that we draw out the first red ball, so that's just one over two, times the probability that the replaced red ball is then drawn out again, which is another probability of a half. So overall that gives us a probability of a quarter. Then if there were two red balls in the bag, then it's certain that we would draw out two red balls. So this likelihood is then equal to one. And we can see using Bayes' box quite easily that the likelihood is not a valid probability density because if I add up all of the values in this column, I get five over four, which does not equal one. And hence we can see that the likelihood is not a valid probability distribution. The next term that we include in our Bayes box is the entire numerator. So that's the product of the prior times the likelihood, the probability of us throwing two or sampling two red balls conditioned on a particular value of R. And to work this out, essentially all we do is we take the product of the prior and the likelihood term in each of the cases. So in the first case, what we do is we take our prior probability of a third, multiply it by zero, and that gives us zero. Then if we take our prior probability of a third corresponding to R being equal to one, and multiply it through by the likelihood, which here is a quarter, in that case, we get one over 12. And then if we consider the R equals two case, we just get a third times one, which is just a third, which we can rewrite in twelfths as four twelfths. And then we can add together all of the terms in this column. 
Because if we do so, that corresponds to marginalizing out the value of R. And if we do so, that allows us to work out the denominator term of Bayes' rule. The probability that we would have drawn two reds out corresponding with our prior beliefs. And to do that, we just add together these values. So here we just get five twelfths. Why is that useful? Because then what we have in the final column of our Bayes box is the left-hand side of Bayes' rule. The probability distribution of a given value of R conditional on the fact that we drew out two red balls. And to get that, all we do is we divide the corresponding value that we obtained in the numerator of Bayes' rule by the denominator term. So the posterior probability of R being equal to zero, given that we drew two red balls out, is equal to zero over five twelfths, which is just zero. Then to get the posterior probability that R is equal to one, given that we drew two red balls out, we take our one twelfth value and we divide it through by five twelfths. So here we just get one fifth. Similarly, to work out the posterior probability that r is equal to 2, we take our value of our numerator, 4 twelfths in that example, and we divide it through by 5 twelfths. And now we just get 4 fifths. And we see immediately that we have a valid posterior distribution here because the values sum to 1. So this example has illustrated how Bayes' box works for a particular set of priors. What happens if we change those priors? Suppose that before we draw any balls out of the bag, we suppose that the probability that the number of reds is zero is a quarter, probability that the number of reds is one is also a quarter, and the probability that the number of heads is two is a half. So we've specified a valid prior here. The sum of all the probabilities is one. The likelihood term here doesn't change at all because that doesn't hinge on our prior beliefs. However, the next column of a Bayes box does change the product of the prior and the likelihood. For r being equal to zero, this doesn't change anything because the likelihood is still zero. So we still get a zero here. However, things do change for our next row when r is equal to one, because now we get a quarter multiplied by a quarter, which is one over 16. Then for the final row where r is equal to two, we get a half times one. So now we get a half, which written in terms of sixteenths, is 8 over 16. And then we can calculate the denominator by just summing all of the values in this column here, and we get 9 over 16. So consistent with our prior beliefs, this is the probability that we would have drawn out two red balls, regardless of the actual number of red balls that were in the bag. Then we can turn the handle of a Bayes box to allow us to work out the posterior in this example. So now we still see that the posterior probability that r is equal to 0 is still 0, to get the posterior probability that r is equal to 1, we take our 1 16th value and we divide it through by 9 sixteenths. And so we get 1 ninth now. And similarly for the probability that r is equal to 2, we get 8 sixteenths divided through by 9 sixteenths, which is 8 ninths, which again we see adds up to 1. So we have a valid posterior distribution. So what do we see when we've changed our prior here? Well, we changed our prior to give more weight to the belief that there were two red balls in our bag. And we see the effect of this because the posterior probability that we assign to there being two red balls in the bag actually has gone up. And we see that because eight ninths is greater than four fifths. Correspondingly, there has been a decline in the posterior probability that we assign to there being one red ball in the bag. So in summary, in this video, I've introduced a concept which is known as a Bayes box which is a mechanical way of seeing just how Bayes' rule works. And it can be useful in discrete examples.